It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. Yo, man. Boom, it's Rusty. Boom, it's Rusty. Something like that. We're here. It is fucking Monday, man. You know what that means. Not fucking Monday. It's Monday. You know, you can swear on here. It's okay. Welcome to the Public Access Podcast, the podcast here on the Quantum Global Broadcasting Networks, brought to you by Stoner Eats QGBN. And this is my third podcast today. So let's uh, let's just go. You're already here. You're listening. You're just going, feeling the flow, doing the doing the uh the bull dance uh you know you know happy gilmore uh yeah anyway so i'm just gonna go right into it i'm bringing down my special guest special guest number three today so today special guest number three right here right now right on this podcast jeffrey Bryan. how you doing how you doing, Rusty? Man, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Um, I'm good. I feel like I just woke up, though. Yeah. Uh, it's a <laughs> little different. Yeah. Uh, are, are you pretty much a night guy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just referring oh. to the fact that I'm late to this podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's okay. If things happen, uh, you know, numbers, numbers and stuff, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, so how have you been? How's how? Where are you in New York? Um, I'm in Connecticut. So I'm. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm gotcha. not in New York. I'm. I'm happy with that. I'm far enough out. I'm. Uh, yeah. I do miss. I miss being in the the country. I've been kind of going back and forth between city and country and yeah, the last few places I've lived. So, are you in the uh, Hartford area? Yeah, I'm it's like, beautiful over there. Yeah, I really like it. Um, I'm like 20 minutes south of there, so yeah, yeah, yeah. not too bad at all. And uh, no. yeah, so so I'm a little different. I was in uh, Salt Lake City before this, so it's oh, that's, uh, yeah, yep, that's a that's, different different world. <laughs> that's, that's a completely different world. And um, I was ready to uh, head out to Connecticut. Uh, right away beautiful place beautiful place but it's a different yeah. world yeah 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 i've been through yeah. uh some parts of utah like um obviously salt lake but park city and places mm -hmm. like that um sometimes uh there are a few little pockets of utah that you can forget you're in utah for a, yep. for like 10 minutes <laughs> yep that's i i was searching for that i was searching for that a lot and uh it was yeah, every so often be able to find it going out, yeah, Park City and kind of out that way a little further. Yeah. And yeah, it's uh it's beautiful. Um, but you know, what you're gonna do. So yeah, it's it's cool out here. I like it. I've been out here like six months. So um I haven't been out here. I used to live here when I was a little kid, but I haven't oh. been out here for 35 years. So oh, wow. yeah, yeah, I just came right back, went right back to where I yeah. Plus problem. So circled right back. Yep. Coast to coast. Um, but yeah, so um so let's see. So I got a brief bit of your musical. Uh I can see in the back. Um, but I, I I'm seeing on the left, I guess you're right, probably. I see some a bunch of keys and a bunch of a uh, bunch of things to push a bunch of things to push and make some yeah. some some sounds um so is that is that a you have uh let's see it looks like you have uh is that a, a full piano that, and a synth no that's that's a that's a controller and oh, that's a controller. A, okay. Yeah, and I've got a, a on top of it. I I got my Whirly 200A. Cool. That's what I thought that was. That's yeah. fucking cool. Hell yeah! And then you, 
I can't go too far with my uh, camera. Oh, that's, fair. that's fair. That's fair. Because it's plugged in. But um, I've got a 200A sitting on top of a, a Studio Logic, just a controller. Uh, and above that is a Pro Logic 8, which is a Korg uh, synth, analog synth. Cool. And then I got my S90 ES down here, which I use for all my local live gigs. And a couple guitars and a guitar. And a guitar, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, I've got my my studio, so I'm able to go <laughs> you know, so at a moment's how, notice. How long have you had that studio? Well, my whole, well, I don't know how to answer that question. Uh, well, I, I've always had a studio, no matter where I lived. Sure. So my whole life, it, it started with a four track, like a little Fostex four track or something. Then, you know, it kind of just kept going. Yeah, I, I guess what I was getting at was uh, how long have you had your setup at your current place you're at right now? Since the day I, I well, we moved here um, about 18 months ago. So okay. from day one. How how long did it take you to set up? How's your cord? Uh, how's your cord organization? How's all that? Um, it's great. I you? mean. Uh, if I had a longer cable, I'd show you, but, um, uh, well, I mean, I can do this. I mean, you can see, watch it unplug. This is my screen. Okay. Um, and this is the second screen, which is on, there we go. Microphone, other stuff, another chair, in case I ever have a guest. Speakers. Yeah. Anyway, so it's it's a this particular. I mean, hold on. Let me make sure I don't disconnect anything here. Okay. Okay. Camera's got to go back. Go back. All right. Cool. Um, so I've got you know a typical. I use um, you know software obviously my DAW, and then I've got uh, you know audio interfaces, and I've got another motif in a rack in front of me which you can't see, and I've got some headphone output in case I have some additional people and I've got my inputs and my pre's and um, yeah, I mean, it's mostly, you know, if I'm doing soundtrack work or writing songs or, or this is the lab, you know, whatever I need to do. Yeah. If I got to write some new patches for a show, um, it all happens in here mostly. And outside in the gallery, I've got a grand piano and uh, um, a Rhodes Fender Rhodes, Ooh. and then and I got my Leslie and an organ, and that stuff's too big to wheel into here. <laughs> so when I work on it, I'm yeah. I'm in the in the much bigger area. But so, uh, how many of those are like? I don't know because I've still I've been setting my shit up here for I've been here six months and I'm still setting stuff up. I've I've moved. Uh, five times in the last four years and each time having to rebuild the studio more and more. And so, yeah, yeah I mean, like every time I'm, I get more and more, um, I don't know. It, it's a hard thing. I, I, I love all my analog stuff. I love recording on cassette tape. Yeah. And wow. But, cassette tape. Two track yeah. cassette, four track. I mean, how are you recording on that? So you record oh. and then you transfer to digital later. Uh huh. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. So you get a little of the warmth or the noise. Yeah, the which noise you I, prefer. I like I like the, I like the noise. The noise is yeah. is fun for me. Why don't you invest in um, you know, you can find them cheaper nowadays, like a, a one inch or a two track machine or something. Uh, that you'll get the real, you know, that runs at that 15 IPS or 33, you That's know, a good idea. You'll get yeah, the I, real, you'll get the we, the real wow and flutter and the, the, no, and the dirt from, from the real deal. If you do that. I think it's a good idea. I, um, I've had a, a bunch of trouble with this because like when we, so my friend and I, when we used to do stuff a bunch, we, this was before, um, whatever before amazon before amazon and we still you still had to go to fry's electronics go to radio fry's. shack and all that yeah. all that shit yeah. yeah and you know try to find connectors to connectors to stick to a connector to connect something else and 
Um, I mean, yeah, we got everything from uh, his wife worked at his thrift store and we ended up just, you know, getting a whole bunch of stuff from there. But like, and, uh, but I don't know, we both, yeah, we both have a bunch of. What, what, what do you, uh, what, what set, what's your setup? I mean, what are you looking at? Um, well, here's what we started with. We each had a, uh, a PlayStation 2 and oh, a uh, DJ mixer from, uh, it's the DJ mixer and the uh, Walk This Way video, which was yeah. weird. And so, yeah. Uh, so it's basically, it's, uh, it, was, it was Magic's Music Maker, which is, right. you know, whatever. It's basic, but it's intuitive and simple. So we'd each kind of make our own kind of track. And we had, you know, we each brought a TV and we go into places and just sort of jam or else if we were recording at home, we just take that and be able to plug all that into a uh, a DJ mixer and then plug that into a... What was your uh, purpose? Just to make music. Uh, oh, so you were writing, writing songs or writing yeah, jamming? Yeah. Or? yeah, so it was sort of like a bunch of... You know, just kind of inter intermixed tracks, like you know, like we each have a track going or two tracks going, and then drop one, bring another one in, and then we integrated it a lot. People would come and see us, and we see these two fuck dickheads sitting at a place, uh, looking like they're playing video games at a, you know, and then so people would come up and start singing or rapping or playing saxophone or drums or. Or whatever, but um, mm. but yeah. So I mean, we we recorded everything just sort of as is and let it go, and then it kind of progressed from there. And now, I have, I still like the old. I I have an old Casio keyboard. I have a I have a synth, and still have my Playstations, and I have. It a, looks like you have an Apple five twelve behind you. What is that? Uh, this right here. Apple two E or something. No, it's just TV VCR. Oh, oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. From from it's not clear from where it I does am. It look looks like, like that Apple two. It, from... it does look like an Apple two. Yeah. Yeah. One of those ones. Now uh, I can see can the VCR now. Trail. Yeah. Huh? Where you can play Oregon Trail. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Or uh yeah. or or uh what is it called? The worm game, you know. Uh the snake. Snake, that's it. Yeah. S yeah playing those and uh yeah and then yeah i got the uh the korg the little mini korg and um oh yeah yeah it's just so you, so you like vintage gear huh i love vintage gear and the thing about it i love it until i have to move and i have to reset everything back up and like yeah i haven't even got to hook up this this korg and i've been here for six months um so I was just wondering, like, what what you do? How do you? I didn't mean to just start talking about that forever. And no, um, I mean, what what do you do when you get your setup? Do you like how you how long home? does that take? Yeah, at home or, or is well, it, it's never it? done. So <laughs> I mean, you know, it's an ongoing process. But I would say, you know, I have there's certain things that I have to have in place to work. So there's some, you know, there's just boilerplate stuff that needs to be set up. My computer has to be running. I've got to have my dual monitor set up. I got to have my speakers, you know, in the right place and, you know, um, tuned. And then I've got to have a way to uh, interface with with plugins and various other sounds. And, uh, and I got to be able to make sound. So if I can get that, I'm good. And yeah. then, you know, and then, you know, things kind of happen because, you know, the lack of things or the mother invention, you know, you, 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 oh, shit, I need more inputs. Well, I better get, you know, some more pre's or I need a better audio interface or whatever. So it's a never ending thing, you know. Um, but right now I'm in good shape. I mean, I could bring in a band if I needed to, you know. How many people have you got in there at one time so far? Well, not in this room, okay. but I've, I've had a drummer, you know, I'll set them up in the big room out there by the piano. 
we'll yep. put a put a tarp over the piano uh and then uh just mic them up and uh you know i mean it's not you know it, it's it, it's it's not a high-end studio but i i can get a pretty good sound yeah it doesn't yeah. need to be a high-end studio to get yeah. a good sound anymore um and it's pretty impressive what um are so are you doing any um like not they're not really live shows i guess but are you doing any like you know making your sound um whatever it may be your um whatever your art your your music piece is yeah. and putting it with somebody else's playing live are you doing that at all like uh through zoom or anything or is that like no I, are you talking about like online collaborations and things like that yeah not really uh First of all, the latency is ridiculous. So I, I don't know how you would overcome that in yeah. a in a in a real time situation. I mean, I've done plenty of tracks for people where I send them the stems or they send me stems and then I just put my bit and send them back. Um I I reserve Zoom primarily just for for conversations. Um I don't make any music on that way, you know. Yeah, it'd be kind of tough to do that to be it's, able to it's not really ideal. You know, yeah. I mean, you have to have amazing bandwidth. And besides that, it, it you know, the further away the person is, the, the longer the latency is going to be, you know, and that's just, that's just physics. Yeah. And then also having them, you know, in the same room as you, you know, you'll get a lot or, you know, at least close, you'll get, yeah. you know, know how they're feeling or whatever. Yeah. I mean, know, collaboration. Of them. Yeah. It's music is a, is a contact sport, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> for me, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's, too. it's a social event. Uh, even if it's writing, I I've written alone, of course, and it's less social in that respect, but, you know, for the most part, you know, I'm writing and producing and, and, and what I do so that I can go out and perform it for people, you know? So it's a social, it's got a social component to it that I think is important. So are you out then? Uh you know, a few days a week going out and yeah, uh, doing... well, I'm, I'm always playing, you know, um, I've got my own, uh, I have a, I have a show that we're bringing to Vegas called the totally seventies yeah. show, which is, um, a band from the seventies that time traveled to today to fix rock and roll. <laughs> cool. And, All uh, right. And it's, you know, it's a whole show and video and, uh, you can check it out. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, in fact, uh, here, let's see if I even have a picture. This is, uh... oh, shit, okay, all right. So that's the KTEL All-Stars, and it's called the Totally 70 Show. So I'm doing that, which is taking up a lot of my time because we're in talks with a few casinos for a residency that's going to start oh. up in the summer. Okay, and, all right, yeah, there you so go. That's, so that's good. And then, you know, I tour with Survivor, the band Survivor. Oh. And we're huh. going back out this summer. So where are you going this summer with them? The Midwest, like they always do. You know, yeah. um, they're from Chicago. So we've got uh I think there's the Milwaukee Summerfest coming up. And uh, there's a couple of casinos. There's actually there's a date in Connecticut in uh, October. Oh, okay. Um which I just got uh, word word of. So I'll let you know yeah. where that is. Yeah. I actually, well, I just know the date. I don't know what uh, yeah. venue. Somewhere you know. over here. Yeah. So I, no. I've been playing keys for them for five, six years now. How'd that come about? Is that something um, you get asked a lot? Is that a, you get asked that one a lot? How, how I met them? Yeah. Or how, how'd that come about? How'd you guys start collaborating? Well, you know, I'm just a hired gun for them. I just play keyboards for them. Um, they aren't really, they aren't really putting out any material. So there's no writing involved anymore. Too bad though. That'd be cool. Um, but, uh, you know, I play keys for a lot of different people and, um, honestly, I don't know how I ended up on their radar, but I, I got an email from their management. Oh, okay. And, uh, okay. I responded and uh that's that's how you know i don't know honestly how they actually came to me but it's not surprising because 
you know, I'm sure our paths crossed in some ways. I mean, there's other people I played with and I'm, if you Google me, it's pretty obvious that I'm, I'm, you know, not hard to find, you know, yeah, you're around. Yeah. Plus, yeah. you know, an odd story is that in 1984, 83, 84, uh, I was in the movie Karate Kid and um, the band that had the theme song moment of truth was survivor. And uh, I didn't know who they were. I was only what, 18, 19 or something. Yeah. 20. I don't know how old I was. Well, not very old. And, um, uh, you know, 25, 30 years later, I get a call from them. <laughs> you know, So it's kind of, I mean, there was just, it wasn't, there was no connection there. It's just kind of an odd serendipitous kind of coincidence. So what'd you do on that film? On I, I, was, I, was, I was an actor. I had a part. Um, there, there's a lot of guys that had parts in that movie that you don't know about. Um, you know, there was, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with the original Karate Kid, but Freddie, yeah. his buddy in, in North Reseda or wherever it was, uh, we, there was a whole group of friends that Freddie had in the script that weren't in karate. And they ended okay. up just, they ended up whittling down the story every day. I'd come to my dressing room and there's more or less to do. Um, but you know, there was Frankie Avalon Jr., um, there was Tom Fridley, uh, who's, uh, you know, um, uh, John Travolta's cousin or, or nephew, actually, and um, a couple other kind of well-known family members that had, well, you know, they were all connected, and, except me. I'm just this yeah. kid from Woodland Hills. Um, but we were all just, you know, young guys out of high school and bouncing around and we get this movie. And honestly, nobody thought it was going to be a big deal. <laughs> Sure. But yeah. I didn't get a lot of screen time, but I do have some. You can find me in the movie. In fact, let me see. Okay. See, this is a. Uh, someone sent this to me. I don't know how you can see it. Oh. Um, oh, there's a there's a reflection for some reason. Yep, I see myself. It's like I'm in the movie now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah it's no no one wants to see that. Someone sent me a shiny picture. Anyway, um, but uh, yeah, so it's just kind of odd coincidence. How'd you end up in that? In what? In the movie, in The Karate Kid. Oh, well, uh, that's a longer story. But, okay. um, you know, I've been a mu mu musician my whole life. And, you know, when I was 16 or whatever, 15, 16, I was doing shows at the Roxy in on Sunset. Oh, yeah. And, uh, um, Shit. There were a mat there were matinee shows that some producers were putting on and and kids would perform for kids on Sunday matinees for birthday Whoa. parties. It's possible that maybe they needed money at the Roxy or something. And this was another I don't know who figured this Holy out. Holy shit. Who thought up that one? Who thought I about bringing kids to the Roxy? Somebody smoking a lot. But yeah. it was it, it was Holy just shit. another revenue stream, I guess, for them or something that it, you know, no one was using the room at noon on sundays sure so they had this show and it got kind of popular and it was on tv uh news you know it, it, it was it was sort of like a, a new like a local news story and uh, merv griffin if you remember merv griffin yeah probably don't but yep. uh johnny carson you know guys like that in the sure. merv griffin show they put they did a segment with um jerry lewis and i appeared on the M merv griffin show for, to to you know to plug the show and um, holy shit i got to sing a song and perform and from that i got an agent and i'm not an actor so i was like okay well that's the road that started kind of being paved in front of me so i just started checking it out and i you know i, I was in a couple movies and i did i did some tv stuff and and then you know i just auditioned for john avelson for the karate kid and just there yeah, I, did, I you know, honestly, I, I was like, you know, a totally Chauncey Gardner, <laughs> you know, <laughs> from the movie, uh, you know, um, remember that Peter Sellers movie uh, being there? Well, anyway, he was well, he's kind of like or or maybe like uh, um, uh, that that Tom Hanks one. What, what was anyway? The point is, but, is that I was just I just kind of walked into into it stupidly. Um, not wrong being with a that. musician. 
and 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 really not knowing much about acting to be honest i wasn't looking for an acting career you know and so you just went right you got music going yeah and yeah so, so yeah. yeah so that's so it's a long story it's a sort of like kind of a not something i planned you know yeah but yeah but the, at the end of the day rather be out playing or so would you rather be at home recording or practicing or touring or playing in your town if you had a choice of one of those four well touring or playing in my town are kind of one in the same you know that's gigging you know so okay yeah well, i'd rather yeah. be i'd rather be performing to be honest um yeah. You know, I do both. I mean, it's not not the end of the world, but I mean, you know, if I had a choice, I I would I prefer the the stage more than anything else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um So, yeah, and then being on the road, what what's a usual little usual time frame of being on the road for you? Like well, two weeks or Well, yeah, cuz if it's if it's Survivor, it's not very long. It's, you know, a couple weeks or or a couple weekends and then we're out, we're back. We fly everywhere, so, you know. Not um, bad. Yeah, the um the crew drives, we fly and so it's, you know, most of the time I'm home. You know, I'll do some oh. gigs, come home. You know, obviously if we did a European thing, obviously I wouldn't be coming home in between. Um that's yeah. a different story. And then KTEL has been traveling um mostly on the west coast but we have gigs we've come as far as uh ohio last year okay um, and we played some midwest shows and then we go up to washington and and some of the other um towns up and down the west coast the states um periodically done, throughout the year huh? have you done portland uh no actually i not with ktel not okay. not with that not with the 70s band uh we've done um I want to, I'm going to, one of the islands there, uh, Bainbridge. Bainbridge Island or yeah. uh, Bremerton? Bainbridge. I, no, Bainbridge? it's Bainbridge. Yeah. We, okay. we go, there's a couple uh, like casinos and nice. stuff that we'd get booked up there and we've played. It's really beautiful up there. Yeah. And, and, and then a couple places in Tacoma and in that area, Bellingham. Okay. Um, yeah. And then Northern California, like Oroville and, oh, and yeah. uh, you know, just oh, north I, of San Francisco. I know, I know, I know Oroville. Uh, oh, you do? Yeah, I, I wrestled there one time or a couple times. <laughs> I, one time I wrestled, uh, I wrestled in Chico there one time too. At, uh, but yeah, it was mostly in Oroville when I go down there. But Chico one time, but that was that was a different kind of story. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. So you're a wrestler? I was. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. At a point, but um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, Northern California was was fun. I liked it over there. And so Yeah, so so we traveled, you know, when we need to. Most of the gigs are in the LA and Southern California area right now. Awesome. Um and then, you know, Vegas, of course. So is that like for do you fly then to Vegas or are you I'm you in Vegas. Job? I live in Vegas. This is Oh, Vegas. I thought you were in I thought you were near LA. It's West Coast. Okay. I'm three hours from LA. <laughs> excellent even even better so all right you're in vegas uh yeah okay it's the same time you know yeah same time zone so okay so, so it's just easier to say west coast yeah well what, what brought you to vegas uh well i grew up in la um so you know that's not vegas is not my home but um it's just time to try something different yeah. Hey, yeah, nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah, and plus, you know, uh, I, I, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, enjoying Vegas and making it a new home for one of my, you know, like I just said, my projects. So that that's yeah. really, uh, it's good to have an anchor here. Yeah, again, that residency there would be yeah, pretty all right, and uh, yeah, yeah. So then, okay, yeah, I mean, you're so you're out that, that's easy okay that changes what i was thinking and i had this whole different picture painted in my head but yeah if you're in vegas i mean that's 
what, 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 how does that change anything? I'm, you know, well, it's just, it's just a, uh, a few hours from LA. What, yeah, I guess you're going to ask me different questions because, because the questions you could ask me about LA, I still know quite a bit. I grew up there, you know. Right. Well, well, no, I was just thinking as far as uh, like touring around and stuff. But yeah, I guess if it's only three hours. I mean, three hours is. I I literally had a had a gig. Sat. What today is Monday? Saturday night. Oh, okay. And I didn't but, stay over. I just drove in, did the gig, and drove home. Oh, okay. Well, how's that drive back afterwards? The same as the drive there. Three and a half hours. Four hours. <laughs> Simple drive. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I mean, it depends on the gigs. You know, I'm not going to go there for a bar gig or something like that. You right. Know, but, you know, certain most gigs, we don't we don't do that anymore. So, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so. With the. Uh, so did you do most of the writing for the new uh, for your the k -tel? The no, the, well, the KTEL the KTEL is a, a is a tribute to an era of the seventies. It's everything that's on a KTEL record from nineteen seventy to nineteen seventy nine. Uh, okay. So we we're, we're reproducing gotcha. these songs that haven't been performed live for years and years and years. Okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Now. And, and okay. the show is an original show in that it's uh, structured in a way that is an entertaining. You know, it's not just a not just a cover band playing a bunch of songs. It's 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 a whole it's a show that goes along with the mythos of the 70s. And, you know, uh, you know, there's there's we play commercials and and in between the songs and from the 70s and and some of the shows and references and, you know, everything that we say and do is, you know, we don't even know what the Internet we don't know what Facebook is, you know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it, everybody's got yeah. this. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's a it's a part we're playing. So. Yeah. And so. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a pretty good deal. And then getting to. Get out and yeah, do something a little different for each. You know. Uh, yeah, getting to have that, but then also being able to. Work on other gigs at home and then out on you know gigs on the road and um is there anything is there something else weird that you you do some some weird thing weird. That you do on the side i don't know weird's a <laughs> weird's a relative term but uh yeah some something off something different that you do that like and then like if you have uh if you have like six hours in a town and you have time to do something where are you gonna go well it depends on on what town man <laughs> you're right you know yeah um i mean if we're by the beach i'm gonna go to the beach right hang out um you know uh check out restaurants i mean i i'm not a big i mean i'm not really a big sports fan so i don't follow a team around I, you know there's not like that's not my thing it's always music yeah. man whatever's music related um i'll go check out the music stores uh i like vintage gear you know um there's not a lot of time when you're when you're at gigs and you're yep. you're traveling to be honest people think it's glamorous yep. but right it's pretty not. much especially the sometimes the bigger the act the, the less glamorous it is because you know they're trying to save money and they just want to fly in do the gig and fly you out usually I, I don't even see the town. I usually see the back of a limo or a bus and uh, in the back of the next guy's airline seat in front of me. Yeah. You know, and then inside the venue, it. maybe right outside the venue. Yeah. Then, right. Yeah. You right know, back. I mean, yeah, we, we, the, right. We get a ride to the venue. It's usually the hotel's decent. And then we just go home. You know, there's, there's been a few times where we've gotten to see some cool parts of the country uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time in Chicago, obviously, um, and uh, parts of the West, the East Coast, which like I, like I had I got to stay a little bit in Connecticut uh, a couple years ago, 2019, I think it was. We, we did some shows out there. I did some shows oh. with Survivor out there. So I got to see a little bit of Hartford, you know, um, I've been to a lot more places than I can remember because they just don't 
they just they're they could have been in they could have been the same place eight yep. times I yep they're just just places that you're yeah. you go and you're there and you're out and yeah right. and then yeah it's don't know what's up what's down exactly play play your show and go so is rusty else. diamond your name uh it was the name i was given it's it's uh it's your actual uh, name uh it was my wrestling name Ah. Oh. Yeah. It sounds like yeah, I get that. Okay. Yeah, it was uh yeah. Um when yeah, when I started wrestling, uh I'll give you the quick quick story. So, I was very quiet, uh very uh eyes ears open, mouth shut kind of guy. Just taking it all Perfect in for and, podcasting. Right, exactly. No, I'm kidding. Very, <laughs> <laughs> right? And yeah, so then uh, they wanted me to, you know, break out of my shell. And so then uh, they started talking shit to me to get me to get back. And because I'd go to these shows before I started training and start just talk shit to everybody because that's what I'm good at. Uh, and right. then so I, I did that. And uh, so someone said uh hey fuck you screech fucking dusty diamond and then someone said did you say rusty diamond and then that's what stuck and i was like well i guess i'm just gonna embrace this bullshit but it worked out all right so uh that's how that came about oh, so cool. it was just me talking shit and someone thinking i look like a fucking dude on say by the bell so one of those kind of things um yeah i what, i didn't get i didn't get that maybe when you were younger you look more like Yep. I, yeah. Yeah, back, yeah. It was a while ago. So it was, yeah, yeah. I was, I was a whip, young yeah. whippersnapper then, but right on. yeah, he talks shit, you know, you gotta do that at some point. Um, so do you interview a lot of musicians or is, or is that just, you sort of like a equal opportunity kind of. So it, it's an equal opportunity. Yeah, there's some musicians. Uh, yeah. Kind of everyone It started out mostly just comedians and, and wrestlers. And then it, kind of spiraled out uh from there to yeah uh, i don't know musicians actors uh writers um, people with people with stories people but yeah. it's mostly just going to you know shoot the shit with whomever is right. basically what right. it is i i don't want to i don't know I, i've never write down questions or anything so there's yeah, always I, that. I noticed. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's uh, there's a few. Uh, yeah, well, we can uh, go. Yeah, there's there's a few yeah. spots. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, try to try to keep it going, but yeah, it, right it, it goes. But yeah, so, um, so what is then going to be your, uh? How are people going to find you? How are people going to find you? They just, it says it's easy to find you. So I guess you, oh, I'll well, put you, the link you on. Go, you can go to my website. There you go. Uh, Jeffrey, R E Y, Brian with a Y music, Jeffrey Brian music.com. And, you know, my everything is there. So, so what, so going back with the names, is that your, uh, is that like your your stage name or is well, that yeah, but it's my name. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The first and middle name kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's what yeah. I thought. I, I was thinking yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Well, yeah. Thank you for having uh Yeah, man. Yourself on here and yeah, coming on and getting to talk and I appreciate uh, it. Great to meet you. And yeah, we'll uh yeah, uh, when when Survivor comes through town, let me know and I'll. I will. I'll, come, I'll, I'll have April send. I'll have April send you the dates. Sounds good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Best of luck if uh, when you're out there in Vegas, and if you ever want to go uh, check out uh, a comedy show, there's a guy out there in Vegas, Todd Royce. Uh, oh, yeah. If you ever check him out. Um, Where you know, is he playing? all over all over there right now he's he's newer to the scene but yeah he's he's out there and getting at it so 
Uh, yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. So, all right. Well, hey, well, uh, yeah, good talking with you and have a good rest yeah, of your day. Thank right. you. You too. Have a You're great welcome. day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. That was Jeffrey Bryan. Yeah, there you go. So that's, you know, sometimes you write uh, stuff. Sometimes you don't. Write down some, <laughs> write down some questions. But yeah, so if you guys want to go check it out, you can, you should, you should be checking it out and go to check out any one of his, anything he does, which is, I think more than me right now, which is great. Someone's doing more. That's awesome. He's getting at it. He's sounds like he has uh, many irons and many fires, which is awesome. So go to his website. I'll link it in the description. And that is the show, man. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. Ernest! 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 <coughs> yes, Pee-wee. You brought the snacks, right?